today we'll be going over, and probably on Thursday, because this usually runs over, um, the uh, music, mobile applications and music education. Most of you, if not all of you, are attached to this thing in your pocket at all times. And even worse, if you have one of these, because then you have no reason to not have a phone call or miss a message or anything like that, or miss an email. Um, I've, I've talked about mobile applications a little bit already. We're going to go into further detail as far as the ones that are commonly used within music education or in music performance. Um, I'll put it this way. I have lost out on gigs because I haven't emailed quick enough. And that's been within hours of getting the email. This is just how the world works now. If you're getting reached by email, they expect to hear back from you within 24 hours if not sooner, just what happens. Um, and if you don't do that, more than likely you're gonna lose out on gigs or lose out on that professionalism. I understand we live in a state, or at least the school's in a state where internet is not the uh, top priority. So a lot of you probably go home and go to different places and don't have internet access. But within 20 minutes, you probably have internet access somewhere. I highly encourage you, even when you're away, to check your email daily, just in case someone gets a hold of you saying, hey, you know, Mike, I need a trumpet player this weekend. Are you available? If I don't see that until the weekend, there's no way I'm getting hired for that job. And that's money out of my pocket, you know? And this is like prime time making money for just about every arts field, you know, during the holidays, you know, particularly for musicians. I'm booked every weekend. And then and double book some weekends, you know that's just how how it works for December. Then January comes and you don't get paid anything. So you basically just getting paid double for December work, making up for January. All right. So some of the applications that I'm going to use um, and talk about during this presentation. Obviously metronomes. Metronomes are a huge idea in the world of music. Uh, tuners, uh, recording devices. Practice help, uh, notation software, uh, theory software, and of course, just basic music education software. So let's get started with metronomes. Metronome is the key function behind any good musician. Um, it's what keeps us on track. It keeps us in time. It's a huge atmosphere. And there's lots of different metronomes out there um, as far as apps go. You can buy free ones. I don't particularly like the free ones because if you don't program them correctly, they skip a beat every once in a while and not on purpose. Um, so again, what I'm going to be showing you are apps that cost money. I'm sorry, but apps should cost money. People took time to develop good apps, you know, and honestly, they don't compare to a Dr. Beat. You know, Dr. Beats are $170 in Sweetwater, last time I looked. Honestly, they don't do as much as some of these apps do. I personally love using different apps, and I, I think Dr. Beats are great, and they're great for different ideas of marching band and being on a slow tempo gradually and things like that, but a lot of applications can do that as well. Uh, the first one is called Time Guru. Best you know, this is the one that I use quite frequently. It's on my phone, it's on my iPad now. Um, and the reason why I use it is because you can input your own rhythms into it. So instead of always being in 4-4, I can go from 4-4 four, four to 3-4 four, to 5-8 to 7-8 to 4-4 four, four, pretty easily. And once you get into more complicated music, that happens very frequently. Or maybe you have an 8-8, eight, eight, you know, it's 4-4, four, four, but it's a different 8-8 eight, eight feel. You know, it's 6-8 plus 1-4. You can put that in there. Uh, there's a little bit of a video showing us different ideas. Different types of rhythms that can be made in Time Guru and stored as presets.
So it's a way that we can even put in rhythms that we don't quite understand. Um, obviously, you know, very easy, very easy to control. Um, it also has a, a random mute function. So you can tell it's a randomly mute the beat 60 whatever percent of the time. And that will kind of keep you more honest as a musician, being able to keep together. Um, you know, one of the pieces that I have programmed um, for trumpet is the Holly Stevens Sonata. Kind of switches back and forth between 4-4, four, 3-4, four, 3-8, three, four, three, and so on and so forth. So I have that programmed into my phone when I'm working on it with a student. Uh, the other cool function that I like is that it has lots of different sounds that we can use. Um, and when I'm working with um, bands and band camps over the summer, I always have it count a different uh, language every single day. We have Chinese, French, German. Russian. Everyone seems to really like the Russian, so I'll leave it on there. And so I can just program it and say I want three eighth notes followed by four quarter notes followed by five sixteenth notes at 116. Obviously, saying Russian that quickly is a little rough. Um, so I'll keep that as five eighth or five eighth notes. So very easily being able to program this. Um, I know a lot of saxophonists who use this quite a lot because their music's pretty out there, um, and a lot of percussionists will use this just because it helps them, you know, subdivide different rhythms a little easier. So that's one application for metronomes. I, uh, last time I looked, it was two dollars. It's a pretty powerful software for two dollars. I bought it. I think it was five um, a while ago. <laughs> Uh, the next one uh, is Pulse. Um, this is one, I think it, it is free. I think there's other functions behind it that aren't as free. Um, cool thing about this, it syncs between phones. So if you're in a band of three or four, you can all have Pulse and actually have it sync together that rhythm and that metronome so you can actually hear it and feel it all at the same time. Um, this is very, obviously this one worked great in a marching band, 300, 400 people setting, but in a setting where we have just a small group, this works great. Um, cool thing about it is, it also has a watch app, which is quite nice. Um, it does actually vibrate the watch. Um, the issue behind the Apple Watch right now is that it doesn't quite uh, vibrate enough when you're playing loud or in a loud setting. Um, there is a group called Soundbrenner that makes metronome watches that work very similar to this. They actually have a free app as well, um, but it hooks up with their watch and their watch is a little bigger. You actually put it on your arm or around your chest and things like that to feel that rhythm and then sync up with other people's as well. It's quite a cool idea. Um, but again, we're seeing mobile applications not only evolving within our phone, but also just on our wrist with our watches. Tuner. So who uses it, like, musician-wise, uses a tuner? What app do you use? Uh, yeah. Don't use an app. Mine, I just have, like, a little... Oh, you have the shark? Yeah. Clip on? I think that's... But when I don't have that, I use a uh, guitar tuner. Okay. Nice. I use uh, the tuner on the bass. Tonal energy tuner. Yeah, which is probably the most... That's, we'll talk about tonal energy. I think it's one of the most common ones used for acoustic instruments, at least. Um, nothing beats one of the shark tuners as far as you know, playing with a guitar or any sort of function like that. It's just nice to have that tuner right on there, um, just working with vibration. Um, the first one I want to talk about is Clear Tune. Uh, this is one of the first uh, tuners out there. It's actually four dollars still. Um, whenever. Uh, applications first got developed. This is one of the first tuner applications. Um, it looks like an old school tuner, if you've ever seen one of those. Um, the cool thing about it is you can actually change the tuning behind it. Um, so if we're working with a young trumpet player, you know, who's playing in the key of B flat, 
you know, I don't want him to play a C in the note B flat come up. That can confuse, you know, a young musician. Um, obviously, it lends itself to being able to talk about that in transposition and the idea of a B flat instrument. But when they're in fourth, fifth grade, I'm not too worried about that. I just want them to understand that they're playing a C. Um, again, this is a application that I use. I think it's great. Um, it also gives out drones of whatever pitch. For some reason it's on F sharp. I don't know why. Um, it will depict what I'm playing or things like that. Um, we can go to settings. It even has different temperaments. I'm not really sure exactly how that works. Um, I mean, I understand it. And it has certain programmed um, frequencies behind each temperament. Uh, but I think it's kind of cool all at the same time. Um, it also obviously has a transposition, so I can transpose it into any keyed instrument all at the same time. Um, obviously has different notations for English. Obviously solfege, I can put it on. I can also put it on Northern European notation, which I've never been taught, but it's on there. Uh, we can also calibrate it. So right now A is 440, as it is in most of the United States groups. Um, but if we go over to Europe, sometimes they'll play an A442. That just changes the pitch just slightly enough that it kind of throws our ears off. Not particularly with just A, but just overall. We can also change it, the waveform from a sine wave to a triangle wave, sawtooth wave, a square wave, everything we've talked about already with the different types of waves as well. Um, so maybe instead of a uh, sine wave, I want to hear that square wave. So once I go here, if we go to playing, it should change, but it didn't. Not sure why. Anyway, I don't mess with that very often. But that's one application for a tuner. Next one is Tonal Energy. Uh, tonal Energy is actually kind of an all-encompassing app. It doesn't just have a tuner, but it, a lot of people use it for its tuning properties. Um, it will also uh, register and record different ideas of what you're playing and how close you're getting to pitch on each one of those. So you can actually use it for more than just a tuner. You can use it for a song tuner all at the same time. So if you happen to be playing your C sharp every single time, not C sharp, but C high every single time, it will depict that and help you out with understanding that. Um, it also includes a metronome built into it, uh, which is nice. Um, what most of my school um, kids, when they're learning to play, like about it is that it gives you a smiley face when you're in tune. Um, and it will give you a sad face and a frowning face when you're really out of tune, <coughs> um, which I think is really cool. And the longer you can hold that note in tune, the smiley face actually gets bigger and it might actually tell you a great job. I can't remember, depending on what function you have on it. Um, again, it also has a watch interface, which is quite, pretty nice. I believe that I have it on here somewhere. I have way too many apps on my watch at the moment. Yeah. So again, it just looks up with my phone. The issue is it will actually play through my phone and not through my watch as far as uh, metronome goes sometimes. Um, yeah, so it's, unless I'm on, hold on. I might be on mute. All right, makes a difference. Yeah. So the issue is sound-wise, it still wants to play through the app. You can just control it with your watch. Very similar to Keynote and different elements like that. You're just kind of using it as a controlling substance rather than being able to actually play something through it. The Apple Watches aren't that powerful yet. All right, recording. Recording is a huge function in the world of musicians. We've already talked about the act of recording an album and things like that, but just on the idea of practicing. Recording is a huge step up to getting better, because you need to be able to hear what you're doing wrong. I know so many musicians out there who think they're playing right, and as soon as I record them and play it back, they teach themselves. 
they're like, oh, I'm doing this wrong, or I'm playing that rhythm wrong. It's a huge step up to being able to have a good recording idea. I think this is the only one I'm going to talk about. It's voice recorder and audio editor. Uh, it's free. At the point as I took this screenshot, it was number 44 in utilities. Again, it's not even considered really a music app. Um, but it can do a lot of things. It uploads to cloud storage, so you can actually keep all your different files. Uh, you can share via social networks. You know, any social network you can think of, it will share to, just like everything else. Uh, a lot of different recording functions. It will record in multiple audio formats. So, you know, if you want to record in AIFF or if you want to record in WAV, it will do that depending on what software you want to be working with after the recording. It will loop as well. So the idea of we can actually loop ourselves over and over and kind of either play with ourselves or put a, a bass track or, you know, a side track in to where we can kind of play with it a little bit more. Um, we can actually trim the audio. You know, if you had a bad take, but you had a good take right afterward, you can cut off the bad take and just keep the good take. Uh, you can change the playback speed um, without it, I believe without it changing uh, pitch as well within means. That is super useful for jazz musicians today. Um, one of the keys behind jazz music is using audiation and understanding what you're hearing and correlating it to your instrument. Um, how we do that today is through the world of transcriptions. So what we do is actually write down and transcribe what someone has already improv'd over, um, which is super important. One of my first transcriptions was Miles Davis's Autumn Leaves, and I tried to do it completely without slowing it down. It's a slower tune, so it wasn't that hard, but I've also done faster tunes where you, I had to slow it down to try to get it exactly correct or as correct as possible. So that's a huge function that you can use with this app. Is it uh, when you slow it down and speed it up, does it change the pitch? It's not supposed to. Um, now there's other apps that are better for that, which I think we talk about with this presentation. Um, but this one, you know, I wouldn't count on it. Um, one of the cool functions also there are multiple reasons why you might need to use this, um, but with subscription, you can actually rec record phone calls with this. Um, so it will record your phone calls for you if, you know, legality reasons you want to record your phone calls. I'll leave it there. You can choose your various um, scenarios why you might want to do that. Um, oh, with the recording, it will also transcribe your phone calls for you or, or transcribe recordings now transcribe is in about the same way if you have an Apple phone you get a message it will transcribe it sort of um, it's not you know we we haven't developed a software that is a hundred percent accurate in voice transcriptions to you know words on paper um, but it's getting better um, that's what it looks like it just looks like an old tape deck recorder system, which I think is kind of cool. All at the same time, kind of the nerd within myself here. Um, but you can actually save all these different ideas. So this person has lectures, saved, meetings, notes, and then different audio formats. Um, you know, very, very simple. Hit play, hit record, hit stop. You know, if you've ever had a tape deck or a CD player, it's all the same functions, same buttons. So reading music, um, obviously with the world of iPads and the world of you know PDFs, almost most musicians now are starting to transfer everything to these iPads rather than reading you know sheets of music or having to carry sheets of music around. Um, the top one is Fourscore, um, very very good powerful app, um, you know works with sorry um, works with foot pedals which is quite nice you can buy like an air turn pedal for like 50 bucks uh, on or even probably cheaper than that depending on the quality you want and it'll sync to your tablet through Bluetooth and you can just change pet teams through that way 
Um, my last two solo recitals in my DMA, uh, the pianist actually used an iPad Pro instead of reading music. And that way I didn't have to get someone to page turn for me as well. Really cool application. Uh, probably one of my favorites just because I think you can also sort it by player. So he actually had like my name under a folder and all the music in order of what I was playing. He also accompanied, you know, 13 other people that week. So he kept their music in folders. It's quite nice. Um, it's $15, which I think is a little high, um, but it is nice. It will do a lot of other functions behind it. Um, Notability, uh, which is a fantastic application, is $10. Um, it's not really a music application. It is the number four application in productivity. Um, cool thing about it is you can record lectures and notes, take notes at the same time with this. Uh, it will transcribe your notes from handwritten to uh, text, which is really nice. Um, I like it because you can write right into the application. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's just very, very easy to use. Um, I use it all the time. It's ten dollars, but I think it's well worth ten dollars just to be able to do all that. Um, you can also use it as a transition app. So if you need to like, you know, copy someone in on something, but it's not completely right, you can write over top of it or circle, highlight things. Works really nice as a reader. Uh, Pi Score uh, is a free version of a music reader. Uh, it almost has all the same functions as Fourscore, only being free. Um, they're actually working towards uh, being able to have facial motions to turn pages, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, I still haven't gotten to work perfectly. Um, it's supposed to be able to like give it a wink and it'll turn the page or raise your eyebrows and turn a page, and different elements like that. It doesn't work great yet, but I think it will. When, as facial recognition software becomes, you know, even better. Um, it's really great. It is free. Obviously, these all have in-app purchases available um, for buying music. Uh, again, it won't give you free music all the time. Um, but, again, it's for basically you can put PDFs in of music you already have. And there is uh, an air turn uh, pro pedal. It uh, has a lot of different functions, but basic $75. I think it's worth every penny of it, particularly if you're going to use the iPad as your main music source. Um, I know when I first got my iPad, I uploaded all my things into PDF form. Again, it's illegal to share that. I'll put it that way. Um, because, you know, you're just taking music. But if you own the music and just take the picture or, or make it into PDFs, it is completely legal to do it this way. Um, and it just helps so much. You know, I had a stack of books this high of different etudes, etude books or study books that are all on that and even more now. You know, hundreds of pounds of books into, you know, a couple, three pounds with the case. It's pretty nice. Apparently, I did that wrong. Oh, sheet music scanner. This is the app that I think we've talked about briefly already. Um, this is an app where it has the worst name possible. Because Sheet Music Scanner, to me, sounds like it should just scan music. That's it. Now, the cool thing about it is it scans music and can play it back to you, which is the really cool element to it. Um, it works pretty well. Um, it gets continually updated. Um, I really love this app for beginners. I also like this app whenever I need to take a two apart and make it into a bass part, or I need to make it into a Barry Sachs part, because I can take it, take a picture of it, it does its thing, I can then take that out through MIDI or Music XML and put it into music notation software like Finale or Sibelius. I've done this before, it works great. Um, the simpler the music, the better it works, but it still works with just about everything. It won't read um, time signatures, not time signatures, tempo markings very well. 
so it would just blow through most of the tempo markings that you see. Uh, but most music stays consistently tempo, and it works really, really well. Um, it's four dollars. I think it's it could probably charge twenty because it's the only app that I know that can do that and does it pretty well. Um, so you can actually see it here. Oh, sorry, sorry, trumpet. Um, so where you literally just you scan this in, it's literally playing it back just like you would see with Sibelius or Finale, um, and then you can actually change how it plays through MIDI. So if I want it to be a piano, or if I want it to be an organ, if I want it to be a clarinet being played, I can change that. Again, you're getting MIDI sounds, so don't expect it to be great sounding. But it's still really great. It reads rhythms great. Um, and again, uh, David Zinsky, or Zinsky, I'm not sure how he pronounces his name, uh, continually updates it as well. I think it's fantastic. It's only a matter of time before Finale or Sibelius actually buy him out, or Avid actually own Sibelius, will buy him out. <clears throat> so practice applications now. Any questions over anything? Understandably, I'm only like hitting the surface of all these different elements. I'm using the ones that I've used in the past and kind of my favorites that I use now, still. All right, <clears throat> practice applications. Smart music, anybody heard of this? Smart Music is probably one of the top softwares for middle school uh, band programs or orchestra programs um, because you can upload your own, you can upload music to it and have assignments through it to where kids can work on it from home. And they have iPad apps, obviously browser applications and such. I believe I have a video. It is, so deceptively, it is free, but it is subscription based to actually use it uh, full. horn I can't help her and and I can stand in the other room and listen and hear that there's a mistake there that needs to be corrected but she can look at the screen and know immediately what to do to fix that and I can't help her with that so for me being able to pay that uh, fee for once a year to smart music um, it's a it's nice to know that She's getting the help that she needs. The smart music that Delaney has, uh, the school the school has offered, uh, is a great value. It, it lets her uh, control her practices. Uh, it lets her identify where her mistakes are. Uh, there's feedback. Uh, there's tempos that you can change, and uh, it's just a great piece of software to know that you know a program that you can use for a year is you know far and away cheaper than if you can get someone to come to your house for an hour or two or what, you know whatever the going rate is. There's definitely value there, and he can do it on his own. He doesn't have to rely on mom or dad who may or may not be able to help him out at all. And so it really just helps uh, reinforce some of the things they're learning in school and, and gives additional feedback so that he's not having to wait till the next day or the next time he sees his teacher um, to try to get better and improve and, and play the music that he's getting to learn. So teachers will send you smart music assignments. And as long as you're logged in, you can just open them up. And usually they'll have directions with either the metronome on or off and a certain tempo. 
and then you just play the assignment. And sometimes they have a certain score they want you to achieve, and you can just keep playing it, and you can put it on so you only play certain sections that you need help on, and you can just play the section over and over. And then once you're satisfied with the score you get, you can submit it to your teacher and they can see how well you do. They have lots of songs on smart music and it's really helped me because like there's lots of tools like a metronome, keyboard, and then like it tells you after a song if you got all the notes right or wrong. So you play along with smart music and it tells you your score, which really helps you practice and tells you what you need to practice to help you get better. You're able to go back and, you know, rework certain spots or certain sections in music so that, you know, if, you don't, if you're not getting a certain rhythm, then you can just keep going back until you do, and it'll show you if you've gotten it right or not. She has been playing more and more as she's gotten more difficult pieces, and so she plays a lot. I would definitely recommend smart music to any school, high school, middle school, elementary school. It's used for their students, for their parents. It's a wonderful program. So the annual subscription is $40, which is nothing comparatively to what you pay for Netflix or Disney Plus or anything like that. Um, it's fantastic. Uh, the idea that we can take practicing to the next level and be able to practice with recordings without your part in there. So if you're playing second trumpet, you now can hear the harmony that you're playing with the first trumpet or with the third trumpet and such. And it's really fantastic. Um, again, music is one of these areas that not everyone has learned. They probably learned when they were in school, but it totally has went away, and let alone playing an instrument. So most parents have no idea how to help their student in the world of music. Obviously, they can help with math and reading and everything like that, but they have no idea how little Susie plays the flute, what fingerings to put down, what rhythms are, and this application can help that. Um, it's really cool because not only will it show you when you play a wrong note, it will also show you when you play a wrong rhythm, and it will show the rhythm that you played. It's a very powerful software when it comes to that. Um, that's why a lot of you know bigger uh, band programs will use this software because it's a way of assessing students as well, which has also been one of the huge ideas of band. You know, everyone gets an A. Well, not everyone deserves an A. You know, we know that. You know, obviously you've played with people that have messed up a part every single time, and you get frustrated with them, but there's nothing you can do. Well, if you're that person, you practice more. <laughs> uh, so that's smart music. Obviously, you can dive a lot further into it. Uh, for college-wise, it actually has a lot of solos with accompaniment parts behind it. So if I need to practice the humble trumpet concerto, they have that. I can even edit it to where if I, have, if I take a rubato in a section, I can edit it to where it will do that rubato with me and different elements like that. It will even wait for you to start certain passages after a hold. Um, it's a really fantastic software, and it really helps you, um, more than anything, it helps your ear, kind of, than, you know, than absolutely helping you play. It helps your ear understanding what you should be playing and how it should sound within other parts. Um, Sonopic, I can't pronounce that right, is a very similar software more for the idea of the individual. Um, I think the, I have a video on this one as well uh, about playing with piano. But only with this one, you can actually see the sound. You can see the, the sound file while you play. Yeah, 
No, I think you can put anything into it. It's supposed to. I've had issue with transposing instruments on a lot of these applications. Um, but if you play a C instrument, it should work pretty well. <coughs> But you can see that it has a ton of exercise files as far as learning scales and not just your major and minor scales, but bebop scales or mixolydian scales, different modes, um, as far as, and with arpeggios as well. Um, you can see that it's doing a lot. Uh, we don't need to watch the whole video. He's just kind of going through the different ideas. Um, one of my favorite applications actually got taken down, which is sad. The application, I actually tried to reach out to the person who made it because I wanted to buy it <laughs> from them and try to put it out again. Um, it would actually come up with um, 10 daily exercises of sight reading. And you could put parameters like, don't go you know, more than two sharps or two flats and only write in three, four. And it was really fantastic. It would only be like three or four measures at a time. But when you're working with middle school students or high school students, it's really great. Um, just to kind of keep them involved and in reading something new every time. Um, one of the applications I am going to talk about is the guy who produced it or made it, um, but it's not quite as powerful. Something when Apple updated to like OS 10 changed the idea of how they could work with the music application, and it just doesn't work anymore, sadly. Uh, so some jazz applications. Uh, iRealB Pro is a fantastic application. Um, it used to be called iRealBook until so Hal Leonard, <laughs> you know, sued them for using the term RealBook. So now it's iRealB Pro um, because not only did they use the name, but they also stole all the chord changes and everything from the RealBook. So they got rid of that. And now it's just iRealB Pro. Um, so what happens is that it makes all these great backing tracks. There's nothing in it but you can download all the songs that are made by someone else. Um, it's a really fantastic uh, practice tool. There used to be lots of other um, ideas behind it called like Band in the Box where you could do things like that. Um, but this is so simple uh, application out there. Um, I don't know, let's just pick a tune. You want to do all the things you are automatically has it filled in. <coughs> From there, I can also tell it to, you know, I I don't really want that key on another key. Say I want to go to E flat instead, and I want to play it just a little slower at 120. <laughs> All right, well, I want to change it even more. Um, I can also tell it to be like, actually, I want a little bit more reverb overall and less piano. Um, let's see here. What else do I want to do with it? Um, hold on. And instead of swing, I want to do it as a bossa nova. Very simple, a lot of different elements to it. I can program, say, you know, instead of here, you know, where I only have C7, maybe I want a 2-5 into the next chord. I can change that as well. Um, very, very powerful application. That's, you know, again, it's $14 worth every single penny of that $13.99 that you're gonna spend on it with tax. Um, I think it's fantastic if you're looking into going to jazz at all. I think it's a worthwhile app to get. If you're just wanting a band to jam with, it's another great application to get. So you don't have to keep pulling up YouTube videos of backing tracks, which most of them are made through this application anyway. Um, so rather go right to the source so you can kind of edit it a little better. Um, AnyTune is another one. It's a transcribing app, which I, I actually would recommend. It's very similar to the amazing Slowdowner or any tune. So the cool thing about it is it will be able to slow things down and keep it at that same, uh, oh my goodness, key. 
You know, a lot of times when you slow, slow things down, it wants to go lower. If you speed things up, it goes higher. This will keep it in the same key. Um, it's really cool because you can actually just depict sections of a song, so you can load an MP3 into it. You say, no, I really only need a minute, to, minute and 40 seconds to two minutes and 30 seconds. And then it will loop that, loop that section over and over and over. Um, it's really helpful. Um, it might also, I can't remember, one of these applications will actually give you what it thinks the chords are as well. Um, but again, you should probably hear most of the chords on your own or try to when doing that. Okay, notation software. So we worked with Finale and Sibelius. Um, neither one of them have a notation software out at the moment. Uh, Finale used to have a, for mobile applications at least, um, they used to have an application to where you could read Finale files, um, but that's now been taken down as well. Um, one of the biggest ones is Notion. Looks like so. Um, again, it produces great uh, looking music. It's just really hard to put input, you know, as is most, uh, you know, just applications for notation are anyway. They're hard to, to work with different inputs, let alone trying to do it on a tablet or a phone. Um, but it's, it's pretty nice, easy to work with as well. Um, there's another one called Notate Me. Uh, it's $40. There's a free version out there if you want to try it. Um, it'll actually take your handwriting and make it into notation. Um, same thing with this touch notation free. Um, again, it'll take your own handwriting of how well you write. And the longer you work with it, the more it will understand your own writing. And because you can adapt it and tell it to, you know, a lot of times when I make a quarter note, I don't actually color the quarter note. I just make it like a little line, two lines for my quarter note. But sooner or later, when I work with, if I work with the software, it would work. Um, they all work with this other software, so you can actually see it. You know, as they're writing it in, it's actually making it part of the notation. Um, Notate me works a little differently. It actually works with two different staffs. I think it's the staff on top is what you write into, and the stuff on the bottom shows you what they think you're writing. And then again, the cool thing about that is you could take that export into Finale or Sibelius or whatever your Muse score, any one of those. Um, how that's possible is through this, my script. And I believe they're using Notability right now. So this is just using technology, uh, MyScript, that you can actually buy to put in your own applications. So if you're wanting to write an application that uses that you think that would use, um, you know, the pen, the Apple Pen, or any other kind of pen a lot, that you think it would be worth it, it's, you know, to put that application in, I think it absolutely is. Um, I think it's just a really cool, powerful, I you know, add-on to a software. All right, so theory, 
Music theory is one of these ideas that um, every musician has to go through at one point or another uh, because you need to learn this to be able to be a good musician or an educator. Um, so there are multiple ideas for learning theory out there. We've already talked about musictheory.net. Um, they actually have applications that you can buy um, to work with theory. So there's actually a theory lessons application. Again, this is all kind of what they have on their website for free. Um, but kind of laid out for the on the phone a little easier. Um, same thing with Tenuto. It's just different ideas of working with music theory, understanding what notes are, what chords are, you know what they sound like as well. Um, they're both four dollars. Oh, the theory exercise and tools four dollars. Four dollars. The lessons is three dollars. Again, I think it's really important. Um, I think it's cool that it not only does piano but also does guitar, so you can understand how to read you know, music on a guitar. Um, uh, when I was taking guitar lessons, one of the most important things that I took from that was like learning to understand how to read a guitar like you're reading piano, seeing all the C's, seeing all the D's, seeing all your E flats, you know, not just chording, but the actual note as well, which is something I still haven't mastered on guitar, um, but I can at least figure it out through other methods fairly easily. All right, so self-education on learning an instrument. Um, with the idea of music technology and the idea of technology, the idea of self-learning has be kind of been this huge blow-up market. Um, you know, that's why we talked about things like the LinkedIn learning page and different, you know, learning pages like that, or even YouTube. You know, my grandpa, um, who played guitar for many, many years, is starting to learn jazz guitar all through YouTube. Just learning how to do different picking and different chording through YouTube. Just kind of self-learning. So obviously YouTube is a huge element when it comes to that. Um, Yukioki uh, is one of the really cool ways of learning how to play ukulele. Um, it's really, really fun. Uh, I remember last year I brought it in. I actually brought in my ukulele. And I played uh, one of the Britney Spears songs. I can't remember. And it told me how well I did. The cool thing about this application, it's really fun looking. You know, you can show out with this cool turtle dude, plays ukulele. Um, but it gives you all the chords. It, you're not reading music notation, but you're reading just kind of chord base with lyrics. Um, and then at the end of your song, it will actually tell you what percentage of those chords you played right. And will give you a little tutorial on how to play the song better. So it's like having a teacher a ukulele teacher in your pocket at all times. Um, there's a lot more applications out there for stringed instruments than there are, and, and piano, than there are for wind instruments, at least at the moment. Um, mainly because stringed instruments are a little easier to play right off the bat. You know, I can teach you two chords on a ukulele and you'll sound good pretty easily. It might confuse you if you know guitar because the chords are actually different, you know. You know, same shape on the guitar, you know, this is D on a guitar, it's, you know, it's G on the ukulele, just because of how the tuning goes. But it's a very, very fun application. Um, I forgot to bring my ukulele. I usually mess with it and play with it a little bit with everybody. Um, I will also throw it out there that I think ukulele is way more important than using a recorder, as far as music education goes. How many of you in music played recorder? How many of you played ukulele? Well, a couple of you did. That's awesome. Um, the idea behind ukulele is that we can actually start to make, we can play real songs quicker, and it correlates to playing guitar a lot easier than when a recorder goes to playing a saxophone or a clarinet and things like that. Um, I think I think it's super important. My wife, um, she does this. She teaches recorder in fourth grade. And she'll teach ukulele in fifth grade. So they kind of have the idea of doing both. Um, but I think, you know, and many of her students have went out and bought ukuleles afterwards because they thought it was so much fun. And it's a great precursor to learning how to play guitar. Because you actually learn to strum, you learn rhythms, you learn to move into different chord positions. Um, and there's only four strings on a standard ukulele, so it's a little easier to play. Uh, musicians, another one. 
Um, very similar basics. Um, again, you're not reading actual notation. You're reading tablature notation, kind of telling you what fret to play and what string to play at a time, which I think is a, a good way of learning, but not a great way to only learn. But again, if you're just wanting to go out and play Taylor Swift songs, this is fantastic. Yeah. I've used that. Have you? A couple times. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, fun. it's a fun software to learn from. Again, and that's really what we're trying to do as music educators is trying to make music more fun so people will practice, um, which is really the key. Because what I tell my students all the time is like, you get, most of the time you get so much better in our 30 minute lesson because you've played for 30 minutes. Imagine if you played for 30 minutes every day and had the same idea behind it as our lessons go, how much better you'd get every single time. Um, you know, I tell them, I can only be with you once a week. I can't be with you every time, single time you practice. So a lot of times, you know, you have to tell them how to practice with good technique and how to catch themselves, which comes back to recording and such. I actually like to video record lessons. I think it's fantastic. All right. Going further into education, which I think we're near the end. Um, there's a rhythm sight reading trainer which I think is really great. Again, I think sight reading is a lost art in the world of music education in middle school and high school. Uh, very rarely will you do sight reading other than at contests. If you even go to contests. Um, I remember when I was in high school, we had sight reading books that we would pull out like the three weeks <laughs> before contests and read some of it. And then we would get a piece that was way harder than anything on there. Um, so this kind of helps you develop how to read uh, different rhythms. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is that you're not playing your instrument. You're just tapping the phone as far as how to play these different rhythms. Um, with that being said, it gives you, based on how well you played, you know, uh, the rhythms, and it comes up with different rhythms all the time. So that's the cool idea behind it, particularly if you're bad at rhythms. Um, fingering, which is a horrible name, again, for an app, um, it has all the fingerings for every instrument, as well as alternate fingerings. Um, so if you go out to be a band director and you have a bassoonist who can't figure out their fingering for E flat, instead of looking through your notes and trying to remember what E flat is, where your thumbs go on the bassoon, I have no idea, um, you know, that's the way you can do it. You know, uh, I think it shows you here a couple of different fingerings. Um, so we actually have the fingering for a trill, uh, which is quite nice. Understanding how to trill from one note to another using alternate keys rather than playing the actual fingering. Uh, obviously, it shows you the keys for trumpet, shows you the, and for trombone as well, what slide positions go. Um, I think it's just a very powerful software. It might not exactly be worth $6, um, other than the fact that it saves time. Um, you know, you could look up fingering charts on Google very quickly. Um, there's a funny meme going around in the trumpet world right now. Um, somebody's daughter typed in uh, on Google trumpet fingering chart, and Google blocked it as a prudential control, saying the trumpet, you know. Understand the word fingering is not a great word to use, but obviously that's the word we use when it comes to instruments. But it got blocked by Google and sent an email to the father. And he's been posting, you know, the screenshot of it. It's really funny. All right. More education. Uh, music Reading Essentials uh, is actually just an, uh, a flashcard app um, that I use quite frequently when I'm first... Uh, working with a student to kind of understand how much they know. Um, it goes into a few different levels. Obviously, there's a very basic level, just notes and symbols and rhythms and intervals, um, just understanding if they know these things. Um, and honestly, it's, it's a great app just to use to refresh yourself. It has timers. Uh, what I used to do um, with some of my younger students is that I, I'd give them whatever level they are, and they have a minute timer to answer as many qu questions as they can. 
and then I'd go with just 30 seconds and try to beat them with it. And most of the time I'd beat them at the first, but that first time they beat me, they were so excited. And then I realized it's time to go to the next level. Um, so again, it's another game idea for teaching music. You know, understanding that most of these kids are playing games right before your lesson and right after your lesson. So somehow we need to make music lessons part of a game as well. Uh, Note Rush is a new game, and it's actually one of the people that developed the app that I really like. Uh, it's number 10 in music. Um, it kind of turns this, uh, again, reading music into a game. Uh, and I think it's really great because you can play your own instrument with it. So I think I have a video on it. As I mentioned before, there are five levels to choose from, and there is a custom level where you can customize it coming to the app. So I'm really excited about that feature. And just a reminder, you can allow or not allow hints, and you can turn on or off the, the sounds. And of course, the three themes. One of my favorite features of this app is the changing themes. I love how the notes themselves become part of the theme. Planets and spaceships, soccer balls, and ladybugs. Because you couldn't actually hear me play, I wanted to go ahead and share a video of one of my students playing this app. When I was using this app for a young student of mine, he wanted to try out all three themes. An unexpected result came from this, so I wanted to share a little glimpse of what happened. Again, the application I used to use uh, did the very same thing again as the same developer, um, except for it went into a lot more detail because you didn't have four or five measures at a time that you had to play in tempo. So anyway, I gave this as a presentation over the summer, so you can, that's why it says thanks for coming. Sorry, I, I meant to get rid of that. Um, and that's my cat. He loves men, that's all I know. Particularly if you have a beard. Um, anyway, any questions about any of this right now? Um, these are all applications that I've used and still use. 
Again, varying ages as far as where to use these apps are. Uh, you just take that into consideration when you're using them. Um, sometimes you'll use an app that's a little too advanced for a student or it's under the level of the student, pretty like that last app. You know, obviously you don't want to use that with anybody in, you know, even middle school or high school. But, you know, if you're like most musicians that, you know, at one point in your life teach piano lessons to five or six year olds, it's fantastic. Um, just what happens. So no questions about that? All right, so we do have assignments that are due that not everyone